this Art Rages art lesson, you get to learn about the third element of art, one of the most important elements of art called color. Artists love to use color in their artwork to make their artwork special. And there are different words and terms that we can learn to make our artwork even better. So today you get to watch a video all about something that artists use called the color wheel. And then you get to learn a song about the color spectrum and you get to create your own interesting, awesome color wheel using science and math. That's right, we're gonna combine science, math, and art today. And once we get started and you finish making your artwork today, you'll understand all about color and how you can use color to make your artwork even better or how you can use color to communicate feelings. So let's watch the video and then I'm gonna show you how to make your own awesome eyeball color wheel. I hope that you enjoyed learning all about the color wheel. Now we want to understand the science and the math behind the color. Color actually originates in light, so without sunlight, our eye could not see color. Even though you think sunlight might be colorless, it actually is showing all the spectrum of colors. When the sun shines on an object like an apple, the apple actually reflects red into our eye and our brain tells us that the apple is red. The rest of the colors are absorbed by the apple. We also want to make sure we understand the parts of the eye because we're going to be using the shape of the inside of your eye to design your color wheel. Now can you tell what shape is the middle of your eye? It's a circle. And the math comes in because we have to understand how to make fractions. When you take a circle and you divide it into equal parts, like 6 equal parts or 12, you're making fractions. So if you understand how to make fractions and you understand about how to draw the parts of the eye, then you're ready to start making your own color wheel eyeball. Now all you need to get started is a pencil and a white piece of paper. I like to fold the paper in half. And in the middle, I use a bowl or a circle shape to draw a big circle with pencil. Once you've drawn the big circle in the middle and you fold it in half, you're going to draw an arc, which is a curved line that goes from one end of the paper, where I put a dot, all the way over to the other end of the paper. This is the outside shape of the eyelid. Now the inside of the eye, inside of the circle, we're going to draw a smaller circle that's going to be the part of the eye called the pupil. Now, a lot of times the eye is wet, so I like to add a shiny mark, which is like a rectangle, and I draw the inside part of the eye on one side. Your eyelid has another line that goes above the eye, and then the bottom eyelid, there's a line that goes underneath the eye. You can also add details like eyelashes, and you can add um, eyelashes at the top. Eyelashes actually protect your eye from getting dirt or debris in your eye. So they're actually protective. Even boys have eyelashes. Now, I like to use my pencil, and once I'm finished drawing all the parts of the eye, then I'm going to trace it with a Sharpie. Now once I'm finished tracing all the parts of the Sharpie, now I need to get a ruler because now I need to turn this circle into my color wheel. And I like to use a ruler to actually measure the circle. My circle is 6 inches long and 6 inches tall. So I know halfway in between 6 would be 3. So I put a little mark there and I draw a vertical line through the eye and a horizontal line across the eye. Now I've divided the eye into fourths, so I have four equal parts. 
That's not enough to make all the colors. You need to have at least six equal parts in the color wheel. So I'm going to shade in and put some value around the edges, but then I need to get my ruler back out and get ready to divide this circle into at least eight or 12 equal pieces. Okay, so now I have my ruler, and if I draw two diagonal lines through the center of the pupil that look kind of like the letter X, now I should have eight equal parts. So I'm going to count them and make sure I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, you need at least six pieces to make a color wheel, but eight will probably be enough because you need three primary colors and three secondary colors. So if you have eight equal parts, then you can get a small paintbrush, a cup of water, and the tempera cake paints. Now, I'm going to start with the primary colors first. Those are the most important colors. So I mixed a little bit of water with red, and you can see I'm painting the first part of the eye with red. Now, the next primary color is yellow. I know that yellow, I need to leave a space between the red to make the yellow. So you want to make sure your paintbrush is clean because if it's not, it's going to turn orange. So I cleaned off my paintbrush and I left a little spot in between the red for the yellow. Once I'm finished painting the yellow, I'm going to wash out my paintbrush again. And then I have one, two, three, four, five other spots. I'm going to actually skip two spots and then I'm going to use blue, which is the third primary color. I'm going to put blue right here in this spot so that I have plenty of room to make green and even I can even make an intermediate color called yellowish green. So I can make two different shades of green. Now I also have space to make two different values or two different colors of purple. So the first color of purple is more, more of a reddish purple. So it has mostly red and a little bit of blue. The next purple I'm going to mix and make like an indigo color, which is kind of like bluish purple. So I actually have two secondary colors, two different kinds of purple. Once I'm finished painting the two different kinds of purple, then I'm going to wash out my paintbrush again, and then I'm going to go to the next secondary color. Now the next secondary color in between red and yellow, I can make orange. Now, if you use too much red, it won't look like it's orange. So if you look, I'm mixing more yellow so that it actually starts to look like orange. So you wanna make sure you mix a little bit of it at a, at a time until it looks like the color that you're trying to make. Now that definitely looks like orange. Now I'm gonna rinse out my paintbrush and I have two spaces to make green. So I'm going to make a regular green, and then I'm going to make a yellowish green. So the first green is going to go next to the blue. That's more of a regular green. But then I can mix a little bit of yellow with the green and make a yellowish green in between the yellow and green. So I'm mixing those colors and I'm making kind of like a light green right there. Now, once my eye is completely filled in and I have the primary colors, you need to have red, yellow, and blue. You need to have the three secondary colors. And then you even have room for two tertiary colors or intermediate colors. Once I'm finished doing that, if you have time, you can add a little bit of value around the eye or shadows to make your eye look really realistic. Value is how light or dark a color is. So if you mix a little bit of water with the black paint, then you can make a gray color and paint the sides of the eyeball. If your, if your gray is too dark, just mix your paintbrush with a little bit of water to make it lighter. So the more water you use, the lighter the color is going to be. So once I'm finished painting in all the values and all the colors, I'm going to write my name on my artwork, I'm going to put it on the drying rack, and my color wheel will be finished. So have fun making your eyeball color wheel, and I can't wait to see how awesome they turn out.